It's your time to rise. It's your time to shine. It's your time to live. It's your time to fly. It's your time. Y'all, I am so excited because it's your time to rise. You have defeated every single enemy in your life. You have overcame every situation according to the will of God. You are set on your journey towards your promised land. It's time for you to rise up. Hey, y'all, this your girl, Miss Right. Listen, it's your time to shine, baby. It's your time to rise. It's your time to live. And it's your time to fly. That's Kelly Price right there. It's your time. Baby, you better put that song in your spirit on today. Because guess what? This is the day that the Lord has made, right? And this is the resurrection day. So I got a resurrection word for you because you've been resurrected. Okay? You better shout about that one. You've been resurrected from every evil, wicked thing that was done against you in your life. This is your time to rise. Let's get into this message, all right? So we coming to you today from the book of Luke, chapter 22. We're going to start with, so today we're talking about the story of Jesus, the death, burial, and the resurrection. Just to give you some context and some understanding on how things happen that led up to it, I'm going to go into it with you today. All right, y'all, listen to this. So we're going to start at Luke, chapter 22, verse 7, and I'm going to read this here to y'all. Listen. I'm about to break this whole word down for you today, okay? Then came the day of unleavened bread. That means like pure. It wasn't nothing added to it, okay? On which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. How many of y'all was sacrificed in your family, amongst your friends? How many of y'all had to be the sacrificial lamb in y'all life? Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat at the Passover. So what is the Passover? It's like the last supper, okay? It's the last time we about to eat together because y'all about to sacrifice me. I just know it. I just, I just know it. So we're going to skip down to verse 14 and we're going to read it. It says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, he reclined, I got to recline for y'all. He said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. <laughs> he was eagerly waiting for that day, y'all. He knew it was about to come. Jesus was straight chilling. He was like, it is what it is. It's about to take place. Then it says, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So he sent, he's telling them this last supper. All right, we're going to go down to verse 20, all right? In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. He knew. The person that was sitting at the table with him during that last supper was going to betray him, right? He also knew that somebody that was sitting at that table was about to deny him three times as well. Let's continue. The son of man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. Somebody in your life done betrayed you? It's woe unto them because they're not betraying you. They are betraying God. Jesus said, woe unto that man who betrays him. They began to question amongst themselves which of them it might be who would do this. Y'all done sat at that last supper with your family, your friends, everybody in your circle because you know this is it. Once you get ready to rise up, hmm. Ain't no more eating with them. Lead them folk in the past. It's time to do away with them, okay? So this that last supper before you rise up. Now they questioning. Everybody questioning what's going on. Oh, hey, me. Well, I don't think I would do nothing like that. Mm -mm. No, what's going on? After a dispute arose amongst them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest, Jesus said to them, see now, I, see, now they arguing about who's the greatest 
amongst each other. They sitting at the table with Jesus. They worried about who the greatest is instead of worrying about who the one going to betray Jesus. Like, they not worried about who going to betray you that's sitting at the table because they know they all probably going to betray you at some point in your life. But they worried about who amongst them is the greatest? What? Let me tell you how Jesus answered that question right here. Listen. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Mm. He basically saying none of y'all ain't great if y'all sitting at this table. If you ain't serving or got a heart of servitude, y'all ain't great. They trying to sit at your table and see who is the greatest amongst them instead of having a heart of servitude. Listen closely. Is it not the one who is at the table? But I among you is one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 31 is Jesus talking right here. He's like, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. He basically told Simon, listen, the devil want to go through your whole life and see how he can work through you, right? So that was him telling Simon about his betrayal against Jesus as well, about him denying Jesus. The devil want to sift you. The devil want to try. He telling his people. Y'all told some people in y'all life, like, hey, the devil going to try you to see if you're going to come up against me. He said, but I pray for you. So maybe y'all need to just start praying for the people that's sitting at y'all table, the people that's at y'all feast, that that's in your circle, that you know is going to deny you amongst the people. Mm. Pray that they faith don't fail. Okay. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So basically, he's saying, you going to do it. But when you come back around to your senses, help your brothers out so that they don't fall for the same trap. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Hmm. He told him he gonna deny him three times. No, 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 no. I'm telling you what it is. You ain't. You can't deceive me because I operate in the spirit realm. You're not gonna deceive me on what I already know. As a matter of fact, as soon as you do it the third time, the rooster gonna crow. Now, we gonna go over to when Peter actually betrayed him, right? In case y'all confused, Simon's name is Peter, okay? So we talking about the same person. Simon is Peter, so y'all don't get it confused. So Peter following Jesus in the distance, right? But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely and she said, that man was with him. That, that, that was a man with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. That's what Peter said. I don't, I don't know him. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you are one of them. Peter like, I am not. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. Some people just ain't going to take the fall with you, all right? Some people just going to be like Peter and be like, Jesus, you on your own. They going to say you, insert your name. You on your own, bro. I don't know you. When it comes time for your crucifixion, when these people come up against you and they crucify you, the same people that say they ain't going to deny you and they going to be there for you, they going to be the main ones. I don't know him. Mm -mm, who that? Who? Who? Jesus who? Which Jesus? It's a lot of Jesuses. Which one? Oh, Nazareth? No, I ain't from Galilee. Mm-mm. Not that, that Jesus. I don't know him. <laughs> it's all right if they ain't got your back. Because it's already written how the story going in. You going win. This story is designed to help you win. God designed this story <laughs> with you in mind. Somebody better shout right there because man may write you off. <laughs> but they didn't know that God wrote your manuscript. Ooh-wee. Mm, huh? Man may have written you off. 
But they didn't know that God wrote your manuscript. Let's read. So now we're going to go down to verse 69 where it say, But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of mighty God. So when you seated at the right hand of God, that's like honor, favor. Think about where God is about to seat you in this season amongst the holies of holies, okay? In an honorable place at his right hand. So here's what's about to happen next, y'all. After you have your last supper with the people in your circle, you already know what's about to happen next. The discernment within you is about to know that somebody going to betray you and somebody going to deny you. And once those two things happen, it's time for the rooster to crow. Okay? Listen. Then after that last supper, it's going to be time for you to get headed on your journey towards your promised land, right? Towards the place where you are destined to go. And on your journey, you're going to hear about people accusing you, people throwing smear campaigns, people slandering your name and speaking all this false stuff against you, right? Trying to crucify you, right? But it's already written. So let's keep reading. Chapter 23, verse 4. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests in the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. So the people that they going to talk to about you behind your back, they don't even find a basis of what the person is saying. They don't even believe what the person is saying to be true. Nah, he ain't that type of person. Nah, she ain't that type of person. I've been watching him. I've been following her. So... I don't see what y'all talking about. I, I just don't see it. So even though they coming up against you, trying to talk about you behind your back and accuse you of stuff, the people that they talking to do not have a basis. <laughs> okay. So verse 13 say, Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod... For he sent him back to us, as you can see. He has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. With one voice, they cried out, Release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. The people in your life that's coming up against you will rather sit with the, the people who have been caught doing something so evil and ill intent just not to have you around. That's just how evil the people are. They would much rather have somebody that they know have been accused of something bad than to have you with them. They want to they wanna do away with you, right? They know what it is. You ain't even did nothing wrong. They know exactly what they doing, right? I don't know. Then again, verse 27, a large number of people follow him, including a woman who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed, because he thought you, you only understood how dark and wicked this world is. He said, For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it's dry? <laughs> So verse 33 says, when they came to the place called the skull, the skull represents death, right? So they came to a place of death where they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Okay. The people stood up watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself. See, what they don't understand is, whatever the will of God is, why would I speak that against myself? Why would Jesus speak against what the will of God already was that was pre-written before he was even born? It's his job to just carry it through, not to try to rewrite the story. So verse 39 says, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and save us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, 
Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. He, then he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. So is somebody out there that's going to come with you. You might have that one person that God has sent into your life. That's going to be with you to experience the paradise in your life once you get there. While everybody else is coming up against you, betraying you, and denying you, it's going to be somebody there that's going to be able to experience the paradise with you. Listen. Verse 47 says, The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. They was happy to see him crucified and they beat their chest. They was just so happy about it. They was just proud about it, okay? Just like the people in your life, they took you down to the place of school, right? And then they wanted you crucified. And once they got what they wanted, which was you to be crucified, to be the sacrificial lamb, they beat their chest. Yeah, yeah. Now we can go live in peace because we just crucified him. We can go live in peace because we just crucified her. That's what they're saying about you. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. They just looking like, mm, mm, mm. You remember in the beginning when Jesus had said, woe unto them, right? Verse 50. Now, there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. Basically, he was an undertaker, okay? He came from the Judean town of the Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in the tomb, cut the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day. The Sabbath was about to begin. So now chapter 24, verse 1, we about to talk about the rise. Ooh, y'all ready to be risen up? Are you ready to rise up in your life on today? Listen, on the first day of the week, ain't tomorrow the first. Very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Whew. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? <laughs> why do you look for the living amongst the dead? It's some people in your life that's going to go back to the place they left you for dead. When they roll that stone back, they're going to see that you are not there anymore. They're going to see that you done rose up to the place where you were supposed to be in paradise, in that holy place, seated at the right hand of God. Mm. They looking for the living amongst the dead because that's where they left you. Mm. But God, let me read that again. Why do you look for the living amongst the dead he ain't here he has risen you ain't there no more you have risen okay you have risen from that place where they left you baby they can't see you they don't know where you at now now they wondering where you at remember how he told you why he was still with you in galilee the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men be crucified and on the third day, be raised again. If you know that you are the sacrificial lamb for the people in your circle, your family, your friendships, relationships, whatever it is. If you know you are that chosen one, it is already written what's about to take place. You got to be delivered into the hand of sinful men. Okay? Be crucified and then you will be risen up. Okay? It's a process. Somebody say it's a process. You got to get delivered into their hands in order to rise up. If you ain't got nothing to rise from and defeat, what's the purpose? Verse 9. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others who, with them who told this 
to the apostles, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. So it's basically like, nah, we left them for dead. Nah, they ain't, mm -mm. we don't believe what you saying. So it's some people in your life that know they dropped you off and left you for dead. They know they left you in a certain place. They like, uh-uh. I made sure I did away with that person so that they couldn't recover. I made sure I did away with that person just so they wouldn't rec recoup nothing. I made sure they lost everything in their life. I made sure their health went down. I made sure their finances went down. Ain't no way they're going to recover from the place that they at right now, okay? So it don't even make sense to them, right? Because it's not humanly possible. This is beyond them. God had to step in and intervene for this one. So in their natural mind, no, it don't make sense. You tripping, lady. But the witnesses is going to come back and tell them what happened to you. The witnesses in your life will see and testify how you have risen from that place. Listen, verse 12. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. This is the same person that denied Jesus. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself, What happened? What, what happened? Where you at? Why is clothes still in the tomb and he ain't there? What happened? Peter left confused. So now we're going to go over to verse 22. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. <laughs> they came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him... They did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets has spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Who about to go enter into that glory? And we're talking about on this side of earth, okay? We ain't talking about in heaven. We're talking about on this side of earth. So let's read verse 44. It says, he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in a city until you have been clothed with power on high. Stay in your city until you've been clothed with power on high. That's when you know it's your time to go to your next destination. But until then, baby, you are about to rise, okay? Wow, that was such a beautiful message, y'all. Listen, some of y'all have been crucified so bad in your life and you made it through the fire, right? The pain that you experienced even pierced you. You had to go through that experience because what did he say? First, you're going to be delivered into the hands of the evil one, right? And then you have to be crucified and then you will rise up. Mm. So the very people that caused you that pain, not only did they bury you, but they also went back to the place that they left you for dead at only to see if you were still there. But today it's time for you to rise up. God is saying, rise up from that place. You done ate the last supper with them people. You done went through the crucifixion. Now it's time for you to rise up and get from amongst the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. The living is not amongst the dead. The dead people in your life is just waiting on the expiration date. Y'all better catch that. But you, my friend, you still have life. So arise from that place. Take your rightful ownership at the right hand of God. It is time for you to get up and move from that place that you've been complacent in, huh? How many of y'all still sitting in that crucifixion from when y'all got healed two years ago? God is saying arise. Anybody still sitting on the defense about people that betrayed them back in 1996? It's time to arise. Come on, get up. 
Okay, okay, okay. What about some of us that is walking around in offense because we haven't dealt with the childhood trauma that we went through? We don't want to face that childhood trauma, so we'd rather walk around in offense to continue to be oppressed. Huh? Somebody, anybody, everybody scream. Ah! There's squirrels in my pants. That girl's got some serious squirrels in her pants. <laughs> On a serious note, what God want to do in your life is unbelievable to man. Men cannot fathom even seeing something like this take place right before their eyes. But God, like I told you, man may have wrote you off, but God wrote the manuscript. The ones that denied you in front of other people like Peter did, they about to be left scratching their head. Ooh, what? Where he at? Where she at? Where they go? She ain't here. Where we left her? God has already written it for it to happen so that they can go be witnesses and tell other people the glory of God in your life. It's time for you to be resurrected. Get up from that dead place. You still got life. Get amongst the living. It is your time. Now, if you really believe it's your time to rise, go on and slap them kids or your spouse and tell them, I'm not staying in the same place them folk left me. It's my time to rise. <laughs> Don't slap nobody. I'm just playing. But either way, let's grow.